Let's wait for a couple of minutes more. Uh, I think we have only can start. Dear friends, partners, and colleagues, welcome to the webinar, New Paradigms of Kazakhstani Mining Sector. Uh, Kazakhstan is considered one of the most interesting regions in the world in terms of minerals geology. And we have historical evidence of international mining companies successfully doing uh, exploration production in Kazakhstan. And some of them today will share their uh, experience. Today also we have distinguished speakers uh, who will cover measure of state support for the development and implementation of mining projects and changes in taxation in terms of subsoil use, uh, AIFC instruments and uh, financing through our uh, Astana International Exchange. So uh, first um, we would like to invite uh, Daulet Sakjanov, who will represent uh, Ministry of Industry and Infrastructure Development. He is head of uh, subsoil use division. Uh, Daulet, uh, can you please uh, switch your video and on? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, Can you see me? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Daulet, floor is yours. Of course, yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. So I do apologize for the, that uh, Ruslan Ross, he couldn't participate in these meaningful meetings. So, and I hope you, you are all doing well and staying healthy in these unusual times. So uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. So I'm Matovat Serjanov, so head of the division of the Department of Subsoil Use at the Ministry of Industry and Infrastructural Development of the Kazakhstan. So uh, as many of you in 2018, we introduced a new mining code of the Republic of Kazakhstan that nowadays, so we can see um, its positive results. So the New, uh, new code fully responds to the best world uh, participates uh, practices and specifically the West Australian model. So with this new legisl uh, legislation, we significantly uh, simplified the process of obtaining the license for the exploration. And we could see that the, within uh, three years, there are almost, uh, almost uh, one, uh, 1,200 new license issues. So, and this is uh, annually uh, minimum 24 million US dollars is expected to be invested uh, under the issued license. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the old contracts for the uh, subsoil is uh, still working. So, and uh, as part of the uh, mineral resource management program, we made available almost uh, 750,000 square kilometers of the land uh, for the exploration. And uh, this is only 8% uh, of uh, territory that is licensed to be uh, to the uh, subsoil users. And this means that major part of the territory is still available. And anyone who wants to start exploration can obtain the license through the, our ministry within 10 business days. So uh, after we introduced a new code, uh, the exploration activity in Kazakhstan, and uh, it has been uh, on the rise. So one of the largest global mining companies, Fortescue, Fortescue obtained more than uh, 18,000 uh, 18, square kilometers for the exploration and activi actively doing it. So uh, also due to these changes in legislation, we could see more than 500 new players uh, on the mining and exploration market of the Kazakhstan. And these are uh, not, not the companies who were working on this sector for the many years, but, uh, uh, but rather smaller junior companies who are usually a lot, uh, a lot more flexible and quick uh, in doing exploration, and which increases the ch chance of making a discovery and contributes significantly to the development of mining sector in Kazakhstan. 
And in Kazakhstan, we have a big per, uh, permanent mining companies such as uh, Polymetal and Token Samrup who support, uh, support a junior, a junior companies and uh, invest funds for them to perform exploration works. With the rapid growth in uh, uh, exploration activity, we can see the significant rise of mineral exploration services. A new local exploration services provides emergence with a market providing drilling, physical consulting, and analytical services. Not only that, but uh, leading global uh, global service companies also entered to the Kazakhstan market and brought with them advanced state-of-art technologies for the exploration and mining sector. And most importantly, the rise in demand of mineral exploration services has led to, uh, to the rise of jobs and the level of uh, salaries in the sector of economy. And finally, uh, what we need to obtain subsoil use rights, uh, you simply need to choose a block of interest, which is available online on the website of ministry and can prepare all the necessary paperwork and just simply apply for the license. So, and we consider your application within 10 business days and either reject it, of course, uh, this is not a case, so or approve it and grant a conditional license for the subsoil use. There are uh, three conditions. So the subsoil users needs to provide uh, sign-in bonus uh, and environmental cost guarantee and perform the environmental pro uh, impact assess assessment. After that, uh, after that, it uh, it will be free to go and make you you big discovery on the soil exploration. Uh, also, I want to mention that the previous to the preferred a guarantee of the uh, liquidation of the consequences of solid mineral exploration, operation was uh, provided after the subsoil user uh, started their exploration. Since the uh, adoption of the new mining code, the subsoil user has to provide the guarantee before uh, he can start exploration and license areas. So uh, we are uh, pursuing the 15th of UN Sustainable Development Goal. So this is all uh, that Ruslan uh, Vash has want to say about the uh, uh, subsoil use market in Kazakhstan. So, yep, that's all. Thank Actually, you very much. Uh, uh, Ruslan Vash has joined us. Uh, can oh, you really? please? Thank you. Yeah, he joined. Of course, that's, that's great. Course is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm sorry a little bit late, uh, but uh, my colleague already gave my speech, and I hope your work will be very successful. I wish you luck in this work. If you have any question, my colleagues will uh, give some information for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, sure, we uh, we have questions, and but we will leave them for the Q&A session. Uh, Dr. thank you for your valuable information. Yes, lots of uh, uh, important works are being done to attract uh, international mining companies to Kazakhstan and can, uh, taking into account that Kazakhstan really has a good uh, historical, historically proven uh, minerals geology. Uh, so there are still some works to be done, especially in uh, digitizing those historical works that we had already uh, or during the Soviet Union or for, for the last 30 years, the, all the information, uh, unfortunately, are still in uh, papers as, uh, because many investors uh, can, do not still know uh, what we have. So uh, as a AAFC, we have pipelines of lots of mining projects and some of them today will be presented actually, but uh, foreign investors do not know about them because we, don't, we do not have still this uh, open source of digital uh, map of ge geographical minerals right. locations. So right. thank you very much. And uh, we will uh, please stay with us for the Q&A session. And uh, next, uh, I would like to present. Yeah, uh, next, I would like to present uh, one of the first uh, consulting companies who obtained a uh, consulting license in AIFC 
to help on board uh, mining companies uh, and help them with geological, geophysical services uh, in Kazakhstan. And they are mainly targeting uh, foreign uh, mining companies. So uh, please let me introduce uh, managing partner of minerals operating, Baujan uh, Mudarisov. Baujan, uh, thank you. Uh, he, uh, minerals operating also uh, co is a co-organizer of this event. Uh, thank you for your help and floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone. Arman, thank you very much. Actually, uh, uh, this uh, webinar is, I think, is quite important because mining is one of the important sectors of Kazakhstan's economy. And especially having all these uh, stakeholders like government, like companies will give uh, its uh, efforts in finding out in uh, Kazakhstan in a different way. Kazakhstan is really changing. It's changing, yeah, I think, at a rapid pace just because uh, we introduced the new legislation, mining legislation, which is quite similar to international uh, Australian uh, standards, and uh, we use best practices in our legislation. And I think that can be the driver, one of the main drivers for uh, increasing uh, the, the, the development of the mining sector in Kazakhstan from now on. And I'd like to thank also the Ministry of uh, Industry and Infrastructural Development. Actually, they are the main uh, policy makers in the mining and uh, what they are doing is uh, actually, it means a lot for the sector. They're reviving the sector after so long period of time. And actually, next speakers, I welcome and I appreciate uh, for other speakers to attend like uh, Rio Tinto, Yildirim and uh, Actually, we also have among the speakers the AIX, which is a quite new instrument for the junior companies. It's based, uh, it's uh, Astana International Exchange. One of the, I think it will be the one of the main drivers for junior companies in Kazakhstan. Uh, actually, uh, Kazakhstan, as I told you, it's, uh, it's changing and it's changing quite, uh, I like the way it changed, really. As uh, I'm a former also worker of the mining department of the ministry. And uh, that time, I remember when I worked there, we did a lot of lots of efforts in changing the legislation, simplifying all the procedures, getting rid of, getting rid of many bureaucratic issues. So now the legislation is for the investors. Now it's the time for investors to come and invest and do exploration. Because uh, as uh, the representative from the ministry told already that we have FMG who already took a huge area of the Fortescue from Australia. And we have also other companies like Centera is going, policies come, trying to come. The majors are coming. I think when the majors are interested, the juniors will be also interested in exploration. It's uh, because of the main drivers. Uh, and uh, I'm happy that our, uh, just to be a little brief, the legislation is change, changed just before new super cycle started. The super cycle means like it's for the, uh, for the electrific electrification of the industry, it's because the EV cars, uh, there is a big demand for lithium, for nickel, for the base metals, especially the last year was very good for the gold. And uh, actually what I'm trying to tell about the Kazakhstan, why Kazakhstan? Kazakhstan, uh, for its independence over the 30 years, couldn't find biggest deposit deposits, but according to the international uh, organizations, international uh, agencies, we have great potential in finding world-class deposits still. So that is, that is the main reason why to invest in the exploration of Kazakhstan. And actually, if we talk about our company, let me try to turn on my presentation, just, uh, just a moment. Actually, our company is a new company. It was established in uh, last year. And I can say that last year was a very, very difficult year for mining companies, for exploration companies, because we met the new challenge. Uh, uh, I cannot tell it's crisis, but it's a new challenge for the companies to restructure, to redevelop the company, to revive the industry again. So our company, we started the company last year and started consulting mostly consulting in the mining sector. And uh, Arman already mentioned that we are the first company who got 
the uh, license for the consulting in the mining sector. As well, we have several other uh, licenses, like uh, we have license for mining and chemical plants, we have in the industrial safety and ecology, and as well in R&D uh, activities, we also receive this license. So we are trying to capture uh, everything regarding the mining business in Kazakhstan. And as we, tell, as we talk about our uh, what we do, actually we are doing, first of all, consulting. And, and now we have a team. We have a team of geologists. We have a team uh, consisted of geologists, mining engineers, ecologists, all, the, all of these people who are engaged in the exploration and mining. For example, we provide geological support. In our geologist team, we have geologists with uh, big experience in the, doing geological works, the field works, especially the coral logging, the, uh, the soil sampling and, and et cetera. Also, we, as, as for the consulting, we did mining design and environmental impact assessments, ecology expertises, et cetera. Also, uh, last year was uh, very uh, productive in terms of drilling. To last year. Also, we are uh, doing reports according to CASRC, our local standards, and uh, also Because last year was difficult year, as I already mentioned, we still, we are happy that we managed to provide some services for local companies like this is the numbers uh, in this uh, slide, you can see the numbers what we did last year in spite of these uh, heavy lockdowns, in spite that everyone couldn't walk, move. Actually, we took all of this, uh, we did all of this stuff for the, for, for the last year. Together with, uh, actually, if we talk about drilling, the this international drilling company couldn't enter our market for a long time, and uh, we were the uh, one who guide them, who enter them to the market to provide the highest quality services. Uh, actually, we did uh, deep uh, hole drillings, uh, more than 1,000 meter, and it was actually quite successful. As well, we uh, did also for the R&D, which is a very important part, together with the international uh, institutes, academics, we did some R&D works for the uh, mining companies. Actually, uh, the main aim is just to providing all the services. We're trying to minimize the cost. We are trying to introduce new technology to our mining sector, especially uh, mining and exploration. And uh, also we did uh, many reports last year. In general, just not to take uh, all the time, we are doing all of uh, turnkey projects. So we are starting actually from uh, we are starting actually from the from the very beginning, from the green fields, and uh, we can make up to the reserve resource estimation. So uh, in, in in general, actually, that's 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 in brief. I welcome all your questions. We will be happy to help any foreign company who has interest in working in Kazakhstan to make their uh, business successful here, to make success stories and also develop ourselves with them because we are a young company and we are very hungry for success. And that is, that is very important. So let me wrap up my uh, presentation and thank you very much for your attention, please. Uh, and the next, uh, here you, you see our contacts. Anytime you have any different, uh, I think Arman also can provide, AFC can provide our contacts because we are based in AFC, our office in AFC. So we are ready to help to any investor, any, any company who's trying to introduce new technology to Kazakhstan, please contact us. Uh, it will be a pleasure to work with you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Baujan, for your presentation. And uh, uh, minerals exploration, is a type of uh, venture business that is considered very risky. And uh, usually banks do not provide finance uh, for mining industry. And uh, if we take into account that Kazakhstan 
mainly is a banking, uh, bank finance oriented uh, country, then uh, exploration works uh, usually have lack of financing. And uh, in the market right now, let's say Astana International Exchange is a kind of game changer uh, uh, for this industry because right now uh, this industry has a chance to attract uh, finance through uh, with, a, um, with a lot more ease uh, through change as it is done uh, all over the world. So I'd like to give the floor to CFO of Astana International Exchange, Renat Biktur. Renat, the uh, floor is yours. Hi, Arman. Thank you for your introduction and I welcome all the participants of this uh, webinar. And let me give you a brief introduction on A and our efforts in uh, developing the junior mining segment that Arman has mentioned. So let me share my presentation. Arman, is it visible now? Could you please just guide me on this? Arman? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay. So let me give you the brief introduction on Astana International Exchange. Uh, Astana International Exchange is uh, one of the main uh, bodies that is within AFC. Uh, if some of you know, there were five pillars when establishing AFC, and one of the core pillars was development of capital markets. Arman has mentioned that historically, Kazakhstan is the banking financed uh, country. So, and uh, AX was, uh, was and is to become a second sort of an engine for the economy and bringing capital here. Uh, this was a project office within AFC, and in 2017, we have uh, established registered AX as the actually first organization within AFC. Uh, uh, AFC uh, has established it with two partners. First one is a strategic partner, a Shanghai Stock Exchange. Probably you, some of you know, it's one of uh, probably five largest exchanges in the world. Even it it's probably the newest one. It has only like 30 years of history, but it's already given the uh, economy of China is one of the biggest ones. Second, uh, our partner was uh, NASDAQ uh, and our technological partner. Again, NASDAQ is also is one of top five exchanges in the world, but also NASDAQ is the uh, IT company and uh, the NASDAQ's matching engine used by over probably 70 or 80 exchanges in over 50 jurisdictions. And that's the matching engine we use on our exchange as well. Um, in 2018, right before the official start of AFC, two new shareholders has uh, joined uh, AX that uh, Goldman Sachs, the investment bank, probably a lot of people know, and the Silk Road Fund that's a Chinese a private equity fund with about um, 60 billion USD uh, AUM assets under management and uh, uh, of course one of the uh, investment institutions that is committed to a uh, Belt and Road project. So when establishing AX in 2017, we had a goal to become a financial hub for, for global and local investors and issuers so that we can <clears throat> support the country's economic growth. Uh, in two and a half years, we went, uh, we, in a brief time, we had many successful stories like an IPO of Kazatom from probably some of you have heard. And today uh, we are full uh, ecosystem. What does this mean? First is the regulation. It's an, an independent from Kazakhstan regulation based on the principles of English law. Uh, our regulator, Astana Financial Services Authority, uh, is modeled after the uh, regulators in the UK and GAC. Uh, for the, uh, we provide different benefits for investors and issuers. First, I have to mention is the tax benefits that are written actually in the constitutional law on Astana International Financial Center, uh, specifically uh, no capital gain tax and no tax on uh, dividend or any interest payments. Uh, also, we want to men uh, mention that we are recognized by um, tax authorities of UK as an uh, exchange, a recognized exchange, which gives which give some uh, tax incentives for UK-based investors. Uh, our trading system, again, I mentioned this is a NASDAQ matching engine, and also we run our own post-trade AX uh, central securities depository. And, uh, again, this uh, according to the uh, global standards. <clears throat> 
investor rights are protected also by the uh, independent court uh, system, uh, which is again uh, up to the highest international standards. Uh, we think we have an easy access to capital and participants for issuers. Where this means we don't need issuers to be domiciled in AFC. Uh, and we do recognize issuers from uh, exchanges uh, that we think are over uh, equal regulation. Uh, our, uh, but for those issuers who would like to um, establish or incorporate an AFC, uh, it's a very easy process now. It's actually online and uh, so you don't even have to go to AFC to register a company or incorporate it here. For brokers, we have a, a recognition system as well. So for foreign brokers, they don't need to have an uh, physical presence within AFC, but have an access to the market as well. Uh, today, our ecosystem is 16 local brokers, Kazakhstani brokers, and 11 international brokers representing almost uh, all parts of the world, uh, from Hong Kong, uh, China, uh, Europe, and etc. Uh, all of our instrument, equity instruments, are supported by the market makers, and we also have uh, obviously the uh, accessibility euro clear for uh, even deeper uh, liquidity market. In terms of a currency, it can be traded almost in every in any currency. For example, uh, shares of Kazatomprom are traded, uh, listed and traded in Kazakhstan tenge, and shares of uh, Polymetal PLC are traded in US dollars. They are also listed in US dollars on AX. So there is a uh, flexibility on that. Uh, I'll think I'll skip this uh, slide because many uh, two uh, speakers before had. Uh, probably have more knowledge than me on the uh, regulation in the mining sector in Kazakhstan and they already spoke about the code, about the licensing uh, and etc. Uh, and they gave an overview of the mining uh, industry in Kazakhstan. One thing I have to mention like, is when you, we used to be students, our teachers used to tell us that you can find almost any element in the periodic table of elements in Kazakhstan. So. Uh, sort of highlights uh, the resources or that our country ha has. Today, there are two global financial hub, hubs for mining industry, especially in terms of uh, uh, attracting public investments. It's, uh, of course, uh, Canada and Australia. Uh, Toronto Stock Exchange um, is uh, sort of a 38% uh, of the, all the equity for mining industry is raised in. Toronto and then 90% in Australian uh, securities exchange. These sort of are the um, benchmark that we are looking at and we would like to be the uh, third point on this map uh, that would help mining companies to raise capital. Uh, again, our geography uh, and the resources of our country in the subsoil sector, uh, I think position us uh, well for that. So what do we offer? Uh, we started as an, a traditional exchange and we had a number of uh, public listings in our main board, but we uh, again saw the opportunities in the subsoil sector and we think that's uh, where uh, our sweet spot as a country is. So in 2019, we introduced a special segment which we called uh, mining, uh, junior mining segment and uh, uh, introduced new rules on mining company rules uh, there are over 20 companies who are in, uh, expressed they're interested on having a public uh, offer in the next two or three years. Uh, we actually have also a pre-IPO segment which uh, those companies who are targeting IPO could list first. This is more easier rules, it gives them time, uh, namely two or three years to prepare for IPO, meaning change the corporate uh, governance structure and etc. cetera, or uh, attract some strategic investors. So this could be done through the pre-IPO segment. So what do our rules uh, say for the issuers? It's a flexible two-tier requirement system. So basically if the company is, uh, has a JORC or NI43 uh, uh, reporting, this is a one set of a uh, sort of a, a requirements and if it's a color C, then it's a different requirement for new companies uh, who are having the first listing or the food juniors want we are ready to give discount on our fees uh, and uh, help with the market makers of course they get an access to the international brokers and then the international investor community for the investors we are uh, 
concerned about protecting their rights and benefits. So especially focused on the disclosure standards, we understand that this is the most uh, important thing so that uh, uh, investors can have a informed, uh, make informed decisions when investing into the mining companies from uh, on our exchange. And again, one thing that I've already mentioned, it's the tax uh, incentives, both in terms of the capital gains and uh, dividend or interest payments. Uh, the tax incentives actually uh, can be uh, stretched further, so it's not only for the companies listed in AX, on AAX, but also companies who are domiciled in AFC, incorporated in AFC, they also have some uh, tax in incentives that our business connect unit could tell about uh, more. Um, we actually uh, recently just launched our new website, it's called afmining.kz. Uh, this is a specific website for developing uh, our mining segment. Uh, for now, it has a mining industry overview. We have uh, uh, worked with an independent uh, consulting company to uh, develop this report, uh, very uh, detailed report on the mining segment in Kazakhstan. Our next step is actually to turn this website into sort of a data warehouse where there will be uh, information about junior mining companies uh, so that the potential investors can have a, a brief information and can compare, as, as they say, apples with apples and oranges with oranges. And then uh, on the next step, we can actually build a pipeline of projects to be IPO'd on Astana International Exchange. Um, but thanks for the attention. This is a brief introduction on Astana International Exchange and, and our uh, work done on the developing of junior mining segment. And uh, if there will be any questions later on, I'll be happy to answer or my colleagues who are also on this webinar. Thanks, Arman. Uh, thank you, Renat. Uh, really, uh, as uh, everyone can witness, uh, IX is a game changer for our region and especially for mining industry that uh, always needed um, financing for exploration work. So we know that ge geological exploration is uh, currently one of the most attractive areas in the mining sector, considering the <clears throat> prices for the minerals that we are having uh, right now. And the global trend is that uh, many large companies go into exploration uh, despite all the risks and they have actually money, uh, the equity financing to enter into like any exploration project. So, and if uh, this otherwise, uh, these large uh, international companies, if they do not do uh, biological exploration, uh, works, the mining industry will face uh, a shortage of resources and we will witness like a skyrocketing of prices for the minerals and commodities. And uh, taking into account that there are fewer and fewer like new deposits and uh, those that are close to the surface uh, and, uh, and it's becoming more difficult to extract those resources uh, we see that um, global players are entering into Kazakhstani market. And uh, today I would like to um, invite uh, Harry Wright, CEO of Rio Tinto Exploration Kazakhstan, uh, who, and uh, I don't need to explain who is Rio Tinto. Yeah, I think everyone knows in the industry. So, Gary, uh, floor is yours. Please share your experience in Kazakhstan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arman. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, I have no presentation, um, so you're just going to have to listen to my dulcet tones and look at my face for the next five minutes. But I hope to keep it relatively interesting. I would like to thank the AIFC to, uh, for inviting me to speak today on Rio Tinto's perspective on working in Kazakhstan over the past few years during a period of change. I must 
apologize up front to those of you who attended the Kazakhstan Day event during the recent virtual PDAC forum. You will be hearing a, a very similar message to what I delivered there. But to say that the uh, past year has seen new challenges for our industry globally would be an understatement. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen us all adapting to a new way of living and a new way of conducting our business. Despite these challenges, Rio Tinto in Kazakhstan has continued to explore and progress opportunities on our existing subsoil use contracts with our partner Kaz Geology, whilst at the same time acquiring on a 100% basis new exploration licenses under the new code that you've heard about to enhance our portfolio in the country. This hasn't been without its challenges as we develop and fine tune systems and processes that continue to ensure the health and safety of our staff and the communities during the pandemic. Um, and as we adapt to new necessary restrictions, such as online engagement over face to face meetings. Rio's progress in 2020 and into 2021 has been achieved with the support of both the Ministry of Industry and Infrastructural Development, thank you, Dalet and Ruslan, and the Ministry of Ecology, Geology and Natural Resources. Two ministries who are very keen to see exploration and mining grow in Kazakhstan and have been working very proactively with the industry to make this happen. Rio Tinto has concluded the first phase exploration over much of our ground in the Karaganda Oblast, secured under subsoil use contracts, relinquishing areas that we've explored and retaining those that we continue to evaluate. These areas are under contracts developed under the old 2010 subsoil use code. Through transparent and collaborative discussions with ministries, we are pleased to see an extension to some of these contract terms. In late 2017 into 2018, the new subsoil use code was rolled out in Kazakhstan. And as you've heard, this code was developed largely off the back of the West Australian mining code, employing transparent best practices and approaches to title acquisition and continuity of license from exploration to mining. We viewed this as a positive landmark moment in the industry in Kazakhstan. Understandably, however, as this new subsoil use code takes effect, it is apparent that some old code rights and obligations ingrained in the older subsoil use contracts contradict some of the newer 2017 mining code principles. Rio Tinto's experience is not unique in this respect as many miners and explorers in the country continue to adapt to these changes. In these cases, industry and the ministries need to be open to dialogue to reach a mutually beneficial solution. And I can say that in Rio's experience, the ministries have been very willing to discuss these transitional issues in a cooperative and constructive approach beneficial to both parties. Also in the past year, Rio has tested aspects of the new mining code by applying for exploration licenses under the principles of first come first served. And we have successfully acquired four licenses in the Kostanai Oblast. This was not without its teething problems as both parties, the subsoil use department and us, navigated our way through a relatively new process, which again was further complicated by pandemic restrictions. However, the documented application process and the timeframes that you heard about earlier were largely achieved. And as usual, throughout the process, the departments were open to dialogue and feedback. I would expect that with time and experience, the process will become further streamlined and even more efficient. The granting of exploration licenses, however, is just the first step in getting onto the ground to carry out meaningful exploration. The understandable and important need to conduct environmental impact assessments and agree land access terms with other land users does take time 
and is governed by processes administered by different ministries and different local executive authorities. In most cases, one process cannot commence without prior completion of the other. And navigating these steps has undoubtedly been complicated by pandemic related restrictions. These, however, are not showstoppers and can be overcome with some patience and dialogue until such a time as synergies in process are realized between the ministries and the authorities. The exploration and mining industry operates within the broader economy and it is inevitable that our industries will be impacted by the COVID pandemic. Being a company that operates in multiple jurisdictions around the world, we have seen a worrying increase recently in countries debating more oner onerous mining codes in expectation of increasing tax revenues without thinking of the potential negative impact on investment. Thankfully, Kazakhstan has avoided this temptation in order to maintain attractiveness to explorers. With the modernization of numerous codes, mining, tax, ecology, the country is starting to reap the benefits of its hard work by seeing a slow but noticeable increase in new international explorers, interest and entry into the country. And as you've heard from earlier speakers, this has had the additional benefit of attracting new service providers, partnering with local companies to bring in new exploration technologies as the need and call for it expands. It has been very good to see the industry in Kazakhstan band together through groups, such as the Association of Mining and Metallurgical Enterprises to present a collaborative voice a collective voice to the ministries. It is even more heartening to see the ministries encouraging companies to reach out to them should they foresee long-term issues that require a collective solution. Along with well-established institutions such as the American and British Chambers of Commerce and of course the AIFC, all with direct links to the ministries and high levels of government, there is no shortage of support options for new companies looking to invest in Kazakhstan for the first time. In conclusion, I hope I have painted a picture that Kazakhstan is a very attractive country to explore in and getting more attractive as legislation evolves and implementation matures. This company on the back of an administration actively seeking to attract foreign investment and working towards improving regulatory processes to make this happen. With all of this, along with the country having the right geological pedigree with undoubtedly many more discoveries waiting to be made, we do see a bright future for the industry in Kazakhstan. Thank you, Arman. I'm happy to take questions now or later. Uh, yeah, I think we are short on time, so I, I think we will not have enough time for Q&A at, at the moment, so please, uh, later. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Gary, for your speech, and um, maybe one of the like most important things that I noticed is, is about taxes. You know, uh, in, uh, in the last year was an extraordinary year. Yeah, and uh, at the same time, we saw how um, oil and gas plummeted. Yeah, and uh, they saw even negative prices. But as for minerals and for gold and uh, other uh, like minerals commodities, we saw new records and uh, copper, yeah, they uh, return to, to their new records, um, record high prices. And uh, taking that into account uh, that, that China is the main uh, buyer of these commodities and uh, when there was lockdown everywhere and uh, uh, transportation logistic changes were broke, uh, the logistics to China was open and uh, our uh, mining companies actually benefited and benefited a lot, uh, as I can see from the audited financial statements who already disclosed them. 
And uh, one thing that I noticed about Texas, this industry doesn't have uh, excess income tax as we have for the oil and gas industry. And for example, any upside for the prices, uh, like it's actually taken by excess income tax for oil and gas industry, but for the this industry, for mining, minerals mining industry, it is left with investors. And uh, as a like as a someone who is uh, working to attract uh, foreign direct investments, it's a good opportunity. It's a good selling point, actually. And uh, I hope uh, there is no one from uh, Ministry of Finance and Tax Departments <laughs> because they will check the financial statements and when they see that uh, how uh, like mining companies benefited last year. Uh, they will be surprised, actually. So, um, sorry uh, for this note. And uh, next, I'd like uh, to give floor to another international mining company from Turkey. Turkey uh, actually was not presented before in the industry. And uh, representative director of minerals exploration and production of uh, Yilmaden Holding, Onur Karakayabi uh, will uh, share their experience in Kazakhstan. Onur B, floor is yours. Thank, thank you very much, Arman. Uh, I want to share a quick uh, presentation. I hope you can see it right now. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes. Yes, okay. yes, I can see it. Uh, Onur Bey, hope it will not be uh, like very big <laughs> because uh, we are- I will just summarize time. it. Uh, okay. I want to just summarize our company and our exper experience in uh, Kazakhstan, not only in exploration, but also in production side, because we are in Kazakhstan since uh, 2014. Uh, so it is Yilmaz and Holding. We are the metals and mining subsidiary of Yildirim Group. And we are the second biggest high carbon ferrochrome producer in the world. And we are the only company uh, which produces high carbon ferrochrome in three different companies in Turkey, Sweden, and Russia. So, besides this, we, have, uh, four, we are the fourth biggest chromium producer in the world. We have uh, mines in Turkey and Kazakhstan. Rather than chromites and ferrochrome pro production, we have a ferromolybdenum and ferrovanadium plant in the United States and a huge coal project in Colombia. And we have exploration license in Kazakhstan and Turkey. So in 2017, uh, we extend our exploration program and develop a diversification strategy. Uh, as you can see in the Kazakhstan side, we have a subsoil contract in, uh, contracts joint venture with Kaz Geology. And beside that, we have also 100% licenses under a NIV code. So I just want to talk about why is Kazakhstan is important for uh, mining investments. In the mining side, uh, in mining uh, is very important for the country. And as you can see in the EBRD's data, it's a huge potential with world-class resource which are operating by leading international companies. As an investment per perspective, Kazakhstan is one of the most important, important company, uh, country in Central Asia. Beside this, Kazakhstan is the hub for uh, Central Asia. With link to One Belt, One Road, uh, the country has potential to reshape the global trade. So uh, I just want to explain uh, this with two graphs. Uh, you can see the top 10 importers and exporters in the mining and field globally. As you can recognize, the biggest importers and exporters are sitting in Kazakhstan's next door. So uh, in our uh, perspective, you can, uh, we just compare uh, the regulations and some, some of the uh, important things compared with uh, developed countries and Turkey and Kazakhstan. As you can see, uh, Kazakhstan has many advantages in many subjects in our pers perspective. 
So in the pros and cons, uh, in our perspective, uh, as everybody is aware, the biggest advantage of doing uh, mining in Kazakhstan is its undiscovered uh, potential. There are several world-class deposits and it has a potential to find another one due to its geological setting. And this potential is not for only the one commodity, but in several commodities. One of the most important advantages doing mining in Kazakhstan is the quantity and quality of historical data, which is in Russian language and hard copy, but uh, we can, several companies can handle this issue. Another advantage of Kazakhstan is the settled mining culture and safety standards. But besides this understanding, regulation and operating culture is challenging, except local operators. And of course, comparing with developed countries, exploration costs are very low. So it's a huge company, country and geological, geographical distances create logistic challenges for not only exploration stage project, but also the mining operations. But last seven years, we have seen and experienced the improvements in the infrastructure of the company, country. The last thing I, I want to mention about the cons is uncertainty in commodity relationship, but it's not one-sided issue. Companies should put these issues in their priority list, top like in Australia. Uh, so we have seen many gaps in, in this subject. So, uh, Last seven years, what we have done in our operations is trust in local people and invest their talent. With this approach, we believe we have one of the strongest team in Kazakh mining sectors right now, but uh, it's coming from the commitment to talent from CEO to the, to the down. So, uh, we have we are we were the tech champion in 2015 and 2016 and project we we want to project finance awards uh, what we have done for our Voscot operations with the ebrd so uh, staying focused to deliver message that we are performance driven entrepreneurial company with a can do attitude and kazakh uh, talent help us to to improve this uh attitude so to maintain high standards and government relationship we are keeping promises stewardship for our healthy and safety standards and of of course our corporate social responsibilities so i just summarize it uh, what we have done with our corporate social uh, responsibilities with this graph so uh as you can see uh, we put people in our uh, corporate social responsibility with our project, even putting uh, benefit our business. We are also uh, considering the society. And I want to thank Kazakh uh, government and our partners to, to improve our operations. So I want to thank you with this great Bosworth Weave and thank you for the opportunity to talk in this webinar, Rama. Thank you very much, Honor Bey. And uh, it's a really great honor and pleasure to have you uh, among speakers and uh, hope you will uh, have very large deposits uh, very soon. And so uh, we see great prospects uh, also in the development of the junior market. And uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Alexander Casey Walker, uh, who is a director of uh, Discovery Ventures Kazakhstan. As the name says it, uh, it's a junior mining company, one of the first ones who uh, came and became a participant of AAFC and our platform, our jurisdiction, and they are registered with us. And I will soon, uh, after Alex presents, I will do a small presentation why uh, mining companies should come into entry into Kazakhstan through AIFC. 
Alex, floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Alan, and um, thank you everyone for your your time today. Um, I I'm a bit humbled to be part of this uh, this this group. Actually, uh, this is my first presentation as as the CEO of Discovery Ventures Kazakhstan. We're quite a new uh, company um, into into Kazakhstan, and um, uh, and this is my first opportunity to speak as the CEO. So I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, uh, and is my screen viewable for everyone as well? Yes, yes. Great, thank you. Um, so Discovery Ventures Kazakhstan was um, uh, essentially started as an offset for an Australian listed company. Um, a junior mining company was looking to diversify from its assets in, in um, Sweden, uh, vanadium assets in Sweden at the time. So uh, myself as part of the management team of that company was we've been did a top down analysis of how to diversify and looked for countries that we wanted to um, see a long future in and, and, and utilize our skills as um, um, not my skills, but our team skills as exploration geologists. Um, and by far and away, Kazakhstan came um, sort of top of the table for us. Um, uh, having experience in lots of other jurisdictions. There's plenty of places that, that the, the mining code is becoming more difficult and it's becoming more difficult to operate. And that, that's first world, many European countries, as well as um, African countries for various reasons. Whereas Kazakhstan seems to be going up in leaps and bounds on the tables of, um, um, of uh, its cap uh, capacity and, and its um, interest in foreign direct, direct investment. Um, so it, it was spun out recently because the Australian listed company um, has decided to focus on Australian assets with COVID. Um, so it was divested to the management team and backed by one of our shareholders, which is a, a multi-billion dollar family office in Australia. Um, and I've taken over as, as the CEO. So um, although we've been operating for two years, ultimately we're quite a new company um, uh, in the assets we're looking at. We've got... Um, four assets, all, all in current joint venture with um, uh, sovereign mining company Talcan Samruk, who have been absolutely integral in, in assisting us with um, uh, with getting this footprint on the ground today. Um, but in getting here, we have reviewed well in excess of 150 projects in Kazakhstan. Um, and uh, to that end, we've tried to do a number of uh, joint ventures and other deals, which I can, I can talk to a little bit um, at the end. But ultimately, this is our portfolio. Um, at the moment. We've focused on two principal areas, um, the Chuili Gold Belt and um, the uh, Rudney Altai um, VMS Belt. Um, and we intend on expanding both of our footprints in, in these belts and, and hopefully in other regions um, as well. Um, the Chuili Gold, gold Belt, it's, it's not, I don't think it's as well known as, as um, a lot of the other gold regions of Kazakhstan. Um, it has a, a it's quite well spread out. It's an orogenic gold belt. There is um, a very significant um, and long mining history of high grade gold structures in this belt. Um, but like a lot of Kazakhstan, a lot of different regions, it, it hasn't had uh, much of an opportunity for, um, uh, for new mining methods and new exploration techniques. And so what you tend to find is that there's um, a lot of trenching, a lot of soil sampling. There's, there's across the entire belt, there's a myriad of, um, of data points to, to show how, um, how, how juicy we like to say the belt is, how much gold and, and copper is potentially in that belt, um, uh, but with very, very little modern exploration. Um, and so what we intend to do over our two licenses, we've got just over 700 square kilometres, is we hope to sign a, a, a magnetic um, program, which will fly this year uh, from, from sort of June, July this year, um, and then follow that up with around 10,000 metres of drilling to test, um, to test some of these structures and, and the very obvious targets. There are um, you know, a number of walk-up drill targets. Occasionally there's some historical information such as IP, but what you tend to find is that when you revert, you know, you confer the IP data to, to and compare it to some of the historical drill results. Well, in fact, the IP was done after the, the you know, one or two drill holes were sunk. It came up with additional targets and they were never drilled. Um, so we think it's very, very exciting. Um, we think there is a huge amount of potential and we also think there's a huge amount of potential for disseminated ore. Um, and Akbakai has is an example of that. There's a couple of deposits there um, uh, that have been assayed outside the traditional vein structure and lo and behold you come up with a much bigger pit at, at say two gram or as opposed to a thin vein that's running at, at 10 grams or something like that. 
Um, so the, the region does have potential to hold very large, potentially significant open pit resources, as well as um, the historical um, high grade um, uh, veins that, that have been mined in the past. Um, the Rudney Alto VML belt is one of the most well researched belts, I think, um, on the planet, probably. And so it's absolutely mind boggling to think that a junior company like us can come in and peg 700 square kilometres bang in the heart of, of, of one of these belts. Um, and you have a look at, you know, Ritter is just absolutely printing money um, at the moment, um, which is, you know, one of the biggest, most well known mines on the belt. Um, and, you know, in pegging these license, we, we, we discussed the areas with, you know, the former head of exploration for, for Kaz, Kaz Minerals, um, Kazakmis, which, which has owned a large part of the belt for so long. And, you know, they just have basically made the statement that the only work that has ever really been done is official work. And I know that um, Kazakmis, for example, really only started flying modern geophysics in, in 2013 with their largest program happening in 2019. Uh, for a HEM survey with, with SkyTem, um, with, assisted by Aurora. And so they're now just following up those targets and, and we intend to do the same um, style geophysics program on our targets. Um, and, and just as a, as a zoom in example, and we're still, we're, we're still receiving data on the licenses and still processing it. Um, but basically the theory is, is, is you know, you, you, you can follow quite an obvious trend um, along these licenses and then you find the areas where there is um, there's cover um, and lo and behold there's no mineralization or, or very very few um, mines with some mineralized points across those areas so our concept is is that there's probably quite a lot of hidden mines given that there's no geophysics um, no geophysics is being conducted and, and so we we hope to find some of them um, and, uh, and for, for those of you that know um, Artemeski, um, Nikolaevsky, they've all been operating for decades um, and some incredibly high grade, you know, in the tune of $400 a tonne current, probably higher than that with the golden copper price today, um, prices in the ground. So, so exceptional deposits, which um, require a lot more work. So I'll just touch on my teaching points. So this is from the perspective of a, of a very, very junior miner having just entered, to the, entered the market. I guess it's things that I, I, I wish I had known um, when I started and, and just, you know, small hurdles which um, d delayed our process. Um, I have to say all in all, I've been incredibly happy with the process working with Talken Samrook has, has been uh, fantastic. And, and I can see us being in country for many decades, assuming we have some, some exploration success uh, over the course of the next 12 months to two years. Um, uh, access to data has been brought up several times. We've found, you know, the, the CASDU Inform website is good. It lists quite a lot of, of data points on there. They're not all available um, and some you can request and they're still under state secret. Um, and it has taken us quite a long time to get hold of some data um, to, you know, in, in excess of eight months to get reports. Um, in, in dealing with some local operators uh, who, you um, have had significant operating experience in country and our website, you'll see, you'll see who they are, um, but largely um, led by uh, Volodymyr um, Buczynski. Um, you know, we've, we've been able to speed up that process significantly. So whereas we were waiting on some data for five months, um, someone locally has been able to get it and, and actually for considerably less price um, uh, within a matter of weeks. So local experience has been, is, is incredibly beneficial. Um, one of the hurdles for pegging ground was the proof of funds, uh, having the first 12 months um, capital in your bank account to, to cover the, the exploration success. Um, you know, we were advised late in the process that an international bank account and international um, statements, foreign statements, even though it's for a, for a listed mining company, which with full um, uh, audited statements, they wouldn't be accepted in country. And so to begin the process of pegging ground in your own name, uh, you need to open up a bank account in Kazakhstan and have the money sitting in that account for at least one month. So that was quite a delay um, in the process for us. Um, and the areas for um, first come first serve areas actually being available. Some of our licenses we had to apply for about five times and they're just little nuances where you, you they're all in the first come first serve area, but you're not allowed to peg within one kilometer of a local village. And it's not very clear as to which, which blocks specifically um, uh, are the ones that, that have prevented you from being awarded that license. So that was a little bit time consuming and probably delayed the award of a couple of licenses by, by a few months. 
Um, currency control was a big thing for us, getting money in and out um, of, of uh, the country um, has been interesting. Obviously, in intercompany loans and so on, you need to have um, all the documentation and then translated to Russian and then it gets approved by currency control and then a bank. So, so be prepared for a few of those hurdles. Um, but again, using local operators, um, you know, having one, one group with a lot of experience in country who you can rely upon, um, we hope to save us a lot of time and money later um, with regards to re referred local operators, um, drilling companies and, and so on. So we've not started our operations yet. So literally just in the planning phase at the moment, um, but I'll just note a, a couple of um, small hurdles on, on terms of availability. Advanced geophysics uh, like Electromag is, is not really available in country. There's, there's SkyTem again, operating via Aurora have, have been able to, um, uh, uh, to rally and get to country quite quickly. We've spoken to four or five operators. A lot of them are very, very interested in coming to country. Um, but getting commercial terms for a local operator um, to provide that assistance has been quite tough. Um, and so I suspect that we can get a lot of other international operators into Kazakhstan if, um, you know, if qualified, decent local partners can have very, very good commercial, um, uh, you know, practical commercial application of, those, um, of a joint venture with those operators. Um, and the same thing for RC drilling, um, you know, we, we, I, again, don't have a lot of experience yet, and we haven't hired a contractor yet, um, but certainly we haven't had anyone pitch to be able to do more than about 100 metres depth for RC, whereas you can get, you know, rigs and operators in Australia that will drill three or 4,000 metres. Um, and so I think there's going to be a huge opportunity there for really good RC operators, um, you know, with modern rigs and, and, and attributes or, or, or local operators working with good international operators. Um, you know, to, to fill that void and, and have, you know, multi-purpose rigs and so on on site. And I know uh, certainly we, and assuming success, would have a lot of interest in, in, um, in, in hiring um, those operators. Um, so thank you very much for your time. I didn't want that to be a whinge. I just wanted it to be a, um, uh, an, uh, us uh, teaching points, um, the things that we've experienced over the last two years. Um, but we are incredibly excited to be to be um, participating both in the AFC and, and in Kazakh mining. And um, we expect to be a very, very big part of it uh, and hopefully a part of future panels going forward. So um, Arman and um, Bojan, thank you very much for, for the invitation and happy to take questions. Alex, thank you very much for your actually meticulous work. I am really impressed at uh, how uh, meticulous you did all the maps of our mining uh, like very like great work thank you very much and uh, dear participants please bear with us a little bit more and uh, I actually I am a moderator at the next closed session so please don't leave this session uh, only after I leave, uh, the next one will, uh, will start. So don't need to rush to the next session. It's still closed without me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, I will show a two, two, three minute presentation about AIFC. And then we have only like two questions to uh, Rutlan and Bauran. Uh, so I will share, yes. Uh, so I'd like to tell you about uh, AIC. It's uh, Astana International Financial Center. Mission is to contribute to the sustainable economic development of Kazakhstan and to attract uh, investments, foreign direct investments. And if you are considering about it, you have to uh, contact me. <laughs> I can always help you to, with the right networks and right contacts. And the strategic direction of EAFC is attracting investments, uh, developing security markets, developing uh, insurance markets, banking services, Islamic finance, and uh, fintech. Uh, and of course, uh, develop the financial and professional service based on international best practice. practice. Here's our uh, management council. Uh, all are distinguished uh, participants. And 
we have this ecosystem. So when you hear AIC, it's uh, actually ecosystem where we have our own administration authority, regulator, court, arbitration center. And I'm a, a, a part of Business Connect who is doing the business development and uh, we can always be a kind of uh, guide through uh, Kazakhstan and through AIFC. So uh, first of all, I'd like to tell about the AIFC court. Uh, it's we uh, really praise it. It's uh, 10 distinguished common law judges uh, from UK and uh, enforcement of arbitral awards um, uh, under the 1958 New York Convention is justice, so you can be abroad and still uh, file uh, do uh, filing uh, your cases. Uh, our regulator has uh, MOUs and uh, recognition with other regulators all over the world, and uh, we have many um, our stakeholder shareholders. Uh, especially for IX, you can see them on the screen. And why AIC, uh, English Common Law Jurisdiction, it's a, uh, uh, let's say, um, offshore inside of onshore, yeah? And uh, there is a world-class regulation standards. Zero tax exemption is for um, those who are operating under uh, financial licenses. Um, so it's not for all. For example, for mining companies, uh, you, you will have tax, <laughs> uh, special labor and visa regimes, and a vibrant financial and business ecosystem. And so we, uh, the, the speakers today mentioned about Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, yes, and there is uh, quite a lot of opportunities. Um, and uh, we also do conducting privatization of state enterprises through AIC. And you can also um, consider our AIFC as a financial gate to the whole region. So that's uh, how many participants right now we have. Uh, so that's it. And uh, please, all the speakers, could you please turn on uh, your videos? We have several questions here. Um, question to uh, Ruslan. Uh, do you, Rus do we have Ruslan Daulet? Can you uh, answer instead of uh, Ruslan or maybe Baujan can answer the question? Uh, you saw the question, yeah, Daulet? Uh, do you have a timeline for digitalization of all the historical record, records and making it interactive and available for prospective investors? Second question, do you intend to implement your code across your staff uh, to ensure uh, your specialists are competent persons? Okay, so uh, will you answer? I, um... Yes, so I will try to answer this question. Mm -hmm. um, so the digitizing of the um, is actually it's not easy to work now. So we are still working on that. So uh, we are recently sent a letter to Minister of Ecology and Geology um, to resolve this problem. Uh, like uh, together, so and as you know, the the all the information is under the Ministry of Ecology and Geology, and so did you know this is a, like very complicated uh, work. So and so we have to send to the uh, request to Minister of Ecology and Geology, and then they send us the the information. So now, so this is the old uh, this um, work is like very. A little bit complicated, okay. so, I'm, so I'm now trying to make it like simple and so soon. So probably we'll um, digitize all this information. Uh, uh -huh. the, the, the thank now. you, uh, thank you, Baujan. Could you add anything? As we see, uh, the one of the like uh, disadvantages, not the disadvantages, but teaching points, as Alex said, is uh, we have. 
uh, several stakeholders as well, one ministry and uh, uh, like answers for some things, another ministry for another, and foreign investor never knows who answers for what things. So uh, I, I, I'm surprised why Alex didn't add that uh, teaching point in his presentation. And uh, in that cases, uh, actually, there will be a good um, time saving uh, if you have uh, companies like um, mineral separating or you come to us uh, to AFC Business Connect, who can guide through and who can uh, tell you whom you need to contact, at least for the time being, uh, there are I think three ministries who answer for the resources right now. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, like happens for a long time. Bojan, could you, could you add yes, anything? Uh, actually, as a former, uh, uh, former uh, employee of the Ministry of Industry, and I had also a chance to work for the Ministry of Ecology, new Ministry of Ecology, Geology, and, uh, and uh, Natural Resources. Actually, this uh, the, the digitalization issue is uh, beyond the Ministry of Industry and Infrastructure. That's true, uh, but it's the main main uh, challenge right now we're facing. It's the main plan because actually for the uh, for this year we already should launch the pilot version of uh, online database for mineral resources which means so all the historical information will be electronic it will be provided to anyone who wants to buy through online procedures and actually uh, we, we will see by december is the deadline for this database and uh, we will see how it goes it's already in terms of uh, is there any activities yes uh, it's it's uh, on the focus of the ministry of ecology and geology they are doing very hard to expedite the launch of this database. And as far as uh, the second question about JORC, yes, uh, JORC is international standards, it's Australian standard. For now, actually, we don't have uh, uh, the enough numbers of competent persons for the JORC. We need uh, expertise, Australian and other consulting companies who has JORC competent persons. So actually, this, this is what we can discuss. This is, this is actually a new market. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we are free. And uh, whoever uh, asked this question, I think uh, Olga Olga Sudnitsen asked this question. I'm free to answer in detail while speaking mm -hmm. privately. Thank you. But this is a general general uh, uh, vision mm -hmm. on these issues. Okay. Thank you. And next question is uh, goes to Alex, Gary, and uh, Onurbe also. Uh, are you looking to use already or are you using Earth observation satellite imagery technology to identify new potential de uh, deposits? A uh, question from Anastasia Bolton. I think you saw. Uh, can uh, anyone me, share? Hi. Yeah, I understand. Uh, let me give a brief information. Yes, we are using satellite imaginary and uh, nowadays we are talking about artificial intelligence, not only the satellite image, but also the historical digitized data and current uh, samples and etc. We are trying to combine all of them to put in artificial intelligence and to find uh, possible uh, opportunities uh, to, to find new deposits. Thank you. Uh, Gary? Yes, it's definitely one of the tools that we use. Um, although we are mindful that, um, you know, the, there's been a lot of very good exploration already in Kazakhstan and, and a lot of the uh, ore bodies, the larger ore bodies uh, on surface have, have been found. There's still some smaller ones to be found, but most of it is going to be buried. Uh, beneath uh, several meters to tens of meters to hundreds of meters of cover. So satellite technologies may be limited in, in those areas, but it is just part of our normal exploration routine using uh, satellite airborne technologies as well. Thank you, Alex, to use it. And um, we we haven't no we we've, we've priced it up, but being quite a small company, we're we're very um price con budget conscious, um oh. and so I mean I, I would sort of reiterate one of Gary's points about 
the, the reality is there's quite a lot of data available. So getting access to that, um, you know, the old sampling, old trenching, um, very, very high quality work was done. Um, and so really it's, it's probably more analysis of that that gives you a cleaner, um, a, a cleaner sort of uh, target, targeting perspective okay. that perhaps than, um, than satellite data. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, this is actually good question and uh, good answers. Uh, we see that we need digitalization. Uh, the separate um, investors, they don't have to bear these costs here, digitizing and putting money into uh, putting the digital, uh, everything digitized data of geographical maps. It's uh, actually we as a country should have good, done it before. Uh, so on this note, uh, I'd like to thank you very much all the speakers for your time and uh, for those who uh, who want to who'd like to participate in the next section uh, session uh, where the five projects in um, rare metals and uh, gold copper uh, you can uh, join us uh, you have it in your emails. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, see you in the next session, closed one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.